What's up guys, Ozzy here, and over the last few days, I decided to take up the challenge of building a gaming computer with only the money that I had in my PayPal account at the time. Well, at the time, I only had a measly $25. I'm pretty broke. But with the money I had, I think I made a pretty awesome gaming PC that gives you great price for performance. So let's get right into the build. So I had to do a lot of scavenging when it came to building a computer for only $25. And so what I did was decide to kind of upgrade an old Craigslist computer instead of starting from scratch. So I looked on Craigslist and I found this Dell Vostro 200 for only zero dollars considering that it was only missing storage and ram and it was using the lga 775 socket i thought it was a pretty good deal so i picked it up other than that the only components that i actually bought was an 80 gigabyte sata hard drive for two dollars two gigs of ddr2 memory for another two dollars and then a gtx 560 ti for 20 bucks so this computer actually came with a 200 watt slimline power supply and i did not trust that thing with a gtx 560 ti in there especially considering how much power Fermi pulls. So what I decided to do was again, look for whatever power supply I could get for as cheap as possible. And I ended up hitting a very good deal. I found an OCZ uh, reconditioned 600 watt power supply that was 80 plus certified for free at a computer store that was liquidating right on time. Like I feel sorry for this store that it was shutting down, but it couldn't be a perfect, a more perfect time for it to be shutting down than when I decided to build a $25 gaming PC. So it worked out pretty well, at least in my favor. So this Dell Vosher 200 actually came with the Core Studio E4500. And I was kind of okay with that, considering that it was a free computer. And I did want to upgrade to the Core 2 Quad 6600. And this was actually gonna be a $50 gaming PC because that CPU is about 20 to maybe $25 on eBay. But unfortunately, the BIOS revision, I mean, not the BIOS revision, the motherboard revision on this motherboard does not support anything over 82 watts for this uh, CPU. So unfortunately, the Core 2 Quad wasn't gonna work. I could have actually went with the Xeon E5450 or any Xeon E that's around 80 to 85 watts. But unfortunately, I would have to buy an LGA 771 sticker and I just did not wanna go through that. Although that would be a pretty awesome build. So I decided to keep the E4500 at least for now. So the first thing I did was try to clean up a little bit. So I took out the CPU cooler and then I reapplied some more thermal paste. I actually have some Arctic MX4 that I just haven't really used. So I used that thermal paste and then I put back the CPU cooler. On top of that, I reinstalled the GTX 560Ti and then I installed the new power supply. Uh, the problem with this power supply is that it is not slimline fit, so it does not fit into the slimmer tower. So I kind of had to compromise and my compromise was not that great, honestly. I just put it on top of the case and I kind of left the, uh, the wires dangling out. But you know, for a $25 uh, gaming PC, I can't really complain there. So I basically left that on top of the case and it's pretty unorthodox and I wouldn't really recommend this, but you gotta do what you gotta do. And if you're only spending $25, you gotta make some sacrifices and that was the sacrifice that I had to make here. On top of that, the case only really supports low profile cards. And as many of you know, the 560 Ti is not a low profile card. So I had to do a little bit of modding and by modding, I mean basically breaking off part of the PCI cage and pulling it up. And so I have this little switch where I can just pull up and pull down and whatever I need to, but that's how I fit the 560 Ti in there. I kind of had to break the case a little bit. So after doing all of this, I put Windows 10 on there, I booted everything up and I decided to install some games to see how this really performs. All right, so with my games, I decided to go with lighter ones first. I started off with Microvolts and I played it at 1920 by 1080 and this one ran pretty easily. Everything was on high uh, except the shadows, those were on low. I had two times AA, four times AF, and I almost hit 60 FPS average. I kind of expected this. This was nothing really surprising since Microvolts is a pretty old game and it can run on pretty old hardware pretty well. I said pretty like four times there. All right, next up is one of the most popular games out right now. It is CSGO. And I decided to start this out on 1920 by 1080 using the very lowest settings. Unfortunately, the gameplay was not very nice. It was pretty choppy. And I'm attesting this to maybe the CPU bottleneck because the CPU is running at pretty much 100% the entire time. And I know that the 560 Ti can handle this game. So what I did was up the resolution so it's more GPU bound and CPU bound. And while well, my theory worked out pretty well. At 2560 by 1440, it worked a little bit better and I averaged at 31 FPS. It was still a little bit jumpy, but it was more playable. Now, Minecraft, another really popular game. This also ran surprisingly well, and although the RAM and the CPU usage was maxed out, 
and it was a little bit jumpy and laggy in the first few moments starting up the game, uh, it did end up being very, very playable. And I was pleasantly surprised because Minecraft is a pretty CPU and RAM bound game. I averaged 60 FPS using the fancy settings, 12 chunk render settings, and using the full screen mode. Now League of Legends was the most surprising because it played beautifully well at 1440p. I maxed out everything except for the shadows, I left that at medium, but everything else was pretty much at the very top and it played very, very well. I was getting uh, lowest was 45 FPS. Uh, my average was almost 60, not quite, I was 56. And I, as you can see, the 560 Ti was holding its own very, very well. So I was pretty surprised. Either League of Legends is a super optimized game or the graphics are not super demanding. Either way, for a $25 gaming PC, League of Legends was easily the best game played. So after some success with the lighter games, I decided to go with the heavier, more recent titles. First off with Smite, of course, I always have to add that in any type of benchmarking uh, platform that I'm using. At 1920 by 1080 on low settings, it was pretty choppy. And as you can see, the CPU bottleneck here yet again. I averaged about 21.13 FPS with several frame drops. My minimum was zero and several pauses it was not very playable. I also tried Overwatch, but unfortunately it was unplayable at 1080p. And again, I tried upping the resolution to 1440p to see if the CPU bottleneck was the case, but the 560 Ti couldn't hold its own at such a high resolution. So I, I dumbed it down to 720p. Even at 720p, it was choppy and unplayable. The CPU bottleneck was still there again, and I was getting 21 frames per second on average. So what's the final verdict for this $25 gaming PC? I will say overall that I'm proud of this little guy. For only $25, I can play older or lighter titles with 30 plus frames per second on average. And although the CPU bottleneck can get pretty heavy, this PC held its own very well, and I was pleasantly surprised. If you are gonna go for an ultra cheap gaming PC, and I doubt any of you will really try to build a PC for $25, it's not very conventional, but if you do decide to build a super cheap PC, definitely try to get at least a quad core processor or a dual core with hyper threading, because as you can see, Pretty much any game 2013 plus with the exceptions of a few indie titles uh, will use more than two cores and you will be bottlenecked if you have less than four cores. So try to go for more cores if you can. And if you do end up with a dual core PC, try to overclock. But that's it for this video guys. If you guys enjoyed it, uh, give it a like. If you hated it, then thumbs it down. And if you loved it, subscribe. Hopefully you guys like my new setup. I will do a setup video because it has been requested before and an office video because I did move most of my stuff downstairs and this will be my new office for making videos. Uh, it's awesome because I actually have a room to myself to do whatever I want. Wink, wink. But I'll catch you guys next time. Peace out.